Welcome to the latest Wax Ecstatic Pack Break. I'm your host, Matt Salmon, and boy, do we have some doozies for you. Yes, with Thanksgiving coming up, we decided to look at some turkey cards. No, not tops, turkey, or red. No, just some absolute stinkers. And why did we select 89 Bowman, 90 Donruss, plus some non-sports options, Desert Storm, as well as Pro Set Superstars of Music? Well, we'll explain that in our next podcast, which is coming up on this Friday, November the 20th. And uh, we'll get into the details of why we selected these and perhaps some other turkeys that you're well aware of. But hey, we've got a ton of cards to open up here. So let's open them up. Let's start with one of the ultimate turkey sets of all time, 1990 Donruss here. We do have a couple packs to open up. Let's at least see what players we have in here. Maybe we have the one card that redeems these packs. That, of course, would be King Griffey Jr. But we start with Tim Burke of the Montreal Expos. The Cobra, Dave Parker, then with the Oakland A's. Danny Tartable of Kansas City. Mike Sosha, Dodgers catcher, of course, longtime Angels manager. Dave Rigetti, near the end of his career. Rick Cerrone, also, <laughs> actually, I don't think he was near the end of his career. He still had a few years left. Sweet Lou Whitaker of the Tigers. Greg Brock of the Brewers. Joe Orsalak of the Orioles. Your Donruss Diamond King, Ellis Burks, uh, also very colorful. Nice little 1990 look to that card. Oh, the checklist. Even a checklist could look pretty terrible in Donruss 1990 style. Here is uh, one of the all-star cards that was an insert. Actually, it was part of the base. I take that back. But Kevin Mitchell, then with the Giants. Les Lancaster. Mark Guthrie. Billy Hatcher with the Pirates, and then Guillermo Hernandez. So let's take a quick look at the card before we uh, open up the other pack. Why is it so bad? Well, just take a look at it. <laughs> You've got this blood red must, uh, ketchup color, I should say, plus this kind of uh, exploding confetti here on the side. These two lines in the back where the player's name is written, those are kind of show up again in the uh, equally bad 1991 Fleer set. And then on the back, you just have this really awkward, again, kind of a ketchup and mayonnaise color <laughs> on the standard back of the Donner's card. We saw that style throughout much of the mid to late 80s. Now let's take a look at the other pack here real quickly, and then we'll get into the Bowman cards and then the non-sports. Let's remove our Carl Yastrzemski puzzle pieces here. We've got Kevin McReynolds. Geronimo Barroa, who had one shining moment in 1992. Another Diamond King, Mr. Mullet, Kelly Gruber. We've got The Straw, Daryl Strawberry. Dewey Evans, very underrated player for his time. There you go, Barry Bonds. Okay, so this is uh, maybe 10 cents. Kind of redeems it. Oh, another checklist card. With Zane Smith, too. So you know that checklist was made just for me. Putting on the Ritz with Kevin Ritz and the Detroit Tigers. Dennis Rasmussen. Terry Kennedy, then with the Giants. Rance Mullenix with the Blue Jays. Holy Sheets. Yes, Larry Sheets, then with the Orioles. Billy Spires with the Brewers. Tim Jones. Yeah, Tim Jones with the Cardinals. <laughs> Tim Wallach of the Expos. And finally, another legendary name in Expo history because of his legendary lumberjack beard. Yes, Bryn Smith. So we'll talk a little bit about the turkey that is 90 Donruss in our upcoming show. Now let's open up the 89 Bowman Rack Pack here. This is a an item I, I bought at a card show a long time ago for maybe a dollar. And I threatened people if they didn't send me cash donations, I would open this. But it's just been sitting on my shelf for over a year, so let's take a look at it. Now you saw the McGuire on the back, so we'll get to that in a little bit. Alvin Davis, John Dobson, Jim Sundberg, Mike Aldretti, 
And this is where I'm reading the players' autographs. So hopefully I get them all right. Harold Reynolds. We've got Mark Gubiza. Boy, it looks like he had a rough day at the office. Kevin McReynolds. Glenn Davis. Dave Valley. One of my absolute favorites from that time. Uh, who do we have this? Gerald Young. Rance Mullenix. David Cohn. And Mark McGuire. So that McGuire card would, uh, I don't know, maybe 25 cents. Now let's take a quick look at the backs, because this is one of the things I liked about Bowman cards back then, and especially 89. And again, we'll talk a little more about this in the podcast. But taking the standard statistics of a player, your usual listing of, you know, in this case, a pitcher. Let me find a hitter real quick. Teammate of McGuire's, Dave Parker. Your usual hits, runs, batting average, home runs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But breaking it down by statistic and by team, 1989 totals, career totals, a very unique way, plus a unique presentation too, this little 3D uh, prism that's going on there. I always thought this was very innovative. Others disagree. In fact, vehemently <laughs> disagree. But I always liked this presentation of statistics on the back of Bowman cards. You would see it for the next few years. And unfortunately, you couldn't do that with a baseball card these days. Thanks to interleague play, you just wouldn't have enough space for all the teams that uh, a player plays against. Let's see. Who do we have here? Andrew Bennis. So Andy Bennis. Ah, oh, the Andy Bennis twin spin. Look at that. And uh, this would have been an Andy Bennis base uh, rookie card. Now, this one's a little damaged here. How did this one fare? Yeah, this one's in much better shape. So uh, when Andy Bennis had uh, his uh, brief flirtation with uh, superstardom, that would have been worth something. Hi, I'm Bob McClure. You may remember me from other film. Oh, no, that's Troy McClure. Dave Stewart. He knows you farted on his couch, and he is not pleased. We got Tom Needenfewer. Tom Glavin. All right, so here's a card. And you'll notice, too, it uh, looks like the same picture that Topps used in 1988 with their base set. So, okay, again, another, uh, I don't know, 25 cents for that card. Not bad. Ken Oberkfell. We've got, I can't even read his name, Jim Traber. Mike Jackson. Billy Bean. Or Buddy Bill. <laughs> That's, I was about to say, wait a minute, Billy Bean didn't play for the Rangers. Buddy Bill, definitely at the end of his career. The hefty Rick Russell. Al Newman, who always had a great smile on his baseball cards. And then we've got Mike Moore on the back. All right, last cards here. So these were the uh, insert cards. You had the reproduction. They were kind of art cards. So this is a uh, 48 Bowman, or 49 Bowman of Richie Ashburn. So even though that was, you know, a contest entry card, it was kind of neat to look at. All right, who we got here? Steve Lake. Jim Abbott. This card was actually, I recall, worth like a dollar or so back in the day I had it. Mark Grace. Would have been a big star card then. Kevin Mitchell there, looking like he's about to clobber you with that bat. Lee Smith, looking rather pensive. Jerome Walton. We've got Pat Clements. Or Pat Combs, excuse me. The Big Cat, who looks actually kind of tiny on that picture there. Andres Calaraga. Jody Reed, infielder extraordinaire with the Boston Red Sox then. Let's see, who's this? Brian Meyer with the Astros. Wally Backman then with the Twins. And uh, clearly needing to see an eye doctor here because he's uh, squinting. That, of course, would be Rick Honeycutt. So we'll talk about the turkey that is... 89 Bowman, but is it a turkey or is it more canned cranberry sauce? I'm leaning towards the canned cranberry sauce, and again, we'll explain in the podcast. All right, just for fun, these two non-sports packs, which came in a variety pack that I ordered on eBay well over a year ago. So again, these are just sitting in my uh, closet. I just want to do something with them. Operation Desert Storm Victory Series. Remember these cards? Not only did Tops have your Desert Storm cards, but Pro Set did as well. And you will see that these were released in 1991, 
not only the Victory Series, but you see Coalition for Peace. So this was after the war and uh, when they were trying to stabilize things in Kuwait and in Iraq. All right, so we've got the Kuwaiti flag. I mean, who doesn't want a Kuwaiti flag? I may just put this on my car's back window just to see what objects are thrown at me. All right, we've got the A-10 Warthog. Look at the back of these cards. So, you know, a nice little descriptor of, of what was on these things. Rolling out tanks. You're welcome. Allied forces, missiles, very uh, phallic cards going on here. USS Long Beach. That adds nicely to my collection. Harpoon launch. Okay. Uh, light armored vehicle, the LAV. Good thing they spelled it out, light armored vehicle, because LAV, of course, is short for laboratory, which is uh, a completely different bomb collector. F-111 Artivark. Use that in your next game of Scrabble, kids. The F-15 Eagle, and that's it. So you can see what the Victory Series of Topps Desert Storm cards were. Uh, sheer propaganda, just, you know, basically whoring out all of what the military had to offer. Oh, boy. All right, you thought that was uh, bad. Ten hot photo cards. Pro sets, super stars of music with facts about your favorite rock, pop, and rap stars. And you can also win a rock and roll trip to London. Oh, boy. I can hardly wait. So let's travel back to 1991, kids. Actually, let me look at the card here. Instant win. Free rock and roll trip to London. Free concert tickets. More than 10000 Great price. Do I have to scratch something here? Or I don't know. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah. Scratch the gold card. Forgive me. I'm going to do this just with my fingernail here. Oh, sorry. Try again. I did not win the free rock and roll trip for two to London. Son of a bitch. All right. 1991. Legends. Jefferson Airplane. How many of these people are still alive? I don't know. Lord Tracy. Who the hell is Lord Tracy? I don't remember. Living Color. All right. Much respect. Cult of Personality. Yep. Kiss, all right, with the makeup back on. Legends, the London Choir Boys. Uh, okay, <laughs> MC Hammer. So, so there you go. That right there. I, I mean, every kid in 1991 wanted that MC Hammer. Dare I say, rookie card. With his 31-member posse, MC Hammer transcended the previous limits of rap performance during his 1990 world tour. All right, that's a bit of a stretch. Hall and Oates. This was, and I remember Daryl Hall had a hit song out at this time. This was pop music, 1991. Hall and Oates and MC Hammer. How did we ever make it? Oh, God. Christ. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about... Robbie Van Winkle in the next show. I've got a great Vanilla Ice story. Historic concerts at the Fillmore, 1966. Poco. And, oh, 10 cents off. Your next purchase of Superstars Music t-shirts as seen in the Pro Set Gazette. Wow. This beats stamp collecting, dudes. Clearly somebody who was roughly 53 years old trying to talk to 16-year-old kids. Well, we've got musical turkeys. We also have pork, perhaps uh, government pork. And then we've got the canned cranberry sauce of 89 Bowman, plus ketchup, please. 1990 Donruss. We got a lot to talk about with our Thanksgiving turkey, sports and non-sports, in our next podcast coming your way Friday, November 20th. Look out for it, audioboom.com and all of our 
podcast channels. I'm your host, Matt Salmon. Thanks for watching this Wax Ecstatic Pack Break.